The Pythagorean theorem is named after the mathematician who discovered it. His name was Pythagoras. He was Greek, and he lived in 500 BC. So the Pythagorean theorem states that if you have a right triangle, right triangle is indicated by this box down here to show that this is 90 degrees. Then one leg makes up one side of the right triangle, another leg makes up the other side of the right triangle. We call those legs A and B. The side length of the triangle on the opposite side of the right angle is called the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always the longest length in the triangle, and we will always refer to the hypotenuse with the letter C. So what the Pythagorean theorem states is that if we have a right triangle, then A squared, the length of side A squared, plus B squared, the length of side B squared, will equal C squared, the length of the hypotenuse squared. Now this is always true for every right triangle, and Pythagorean theorem is really a big idea in math. So you will continue to use Pythagorean theorem in many ways and learn more about Pythagorean theorem as you progress in math. It's important that you understand it now um, and that you ask questions to help yourself understand it now. So the cool thing about Pythagorean theorem is that if we know two side lengths, whether they're legs or the hypotenuse, we will always be able to determine the third side length in a right triangle. Let's do some examples. All right, let's say we have a right triangle that looks like this. Not perfect, but that's all right. It's a right triangle, so it has 90 degrees. And we know that this side length is three, this side length is four and we're not sure what the hypotenuse is. Well, first we need to ask ourselves what part of the triangle is missing. We know one of the legs, we know the other leg, and we need to figure out the hypotenuse. Remember, the hypotenuse is always referred to with the letter C, and then for the legs, it doesn't really matter. They're interchangeable. It doesn't matter which one we say is A, which one we say is B. So I'm going to say this one is B and this one is A. Well, the Pythagorean theorem tells us that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A is 4, so 4 squared, plus B is 3, 3 square, squared equals C squared. When I square a number, it just means I multiply the number by itself. So four squared is really four times four. Three squared is three times three equals C squared. Four squared is 16 plus three squared is nine. That equals C squared. 16 plus nine equals 25. 25 equals C squared. Now you might get here and think you're done because you have C by itself, but you don't really have C by itself. You have C squared. And C squared is C times C. So that means what number times itself equals this? Well, we can take the positive square root of both sides. If we take the square root of C squared, well, the square root of a square number means that these essentially cancel out. And the square root of 25 is 5, so 5 equals C. We can double check that over here. Um, if C squared equals 25 and C is 5, is this true? 5 times 5 is 25, 25 equals 25. Yes, it's true. So we figured out the hypotenuse is 5. And this might be in different units. This could be Maybe it's all in centimeters, maybe it's all in inches, maybe it's all in yards or feet or meters or kilometers. So um, this is how to use Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. 
Now, what if we are given a triangle that's missing a leg? Can we still figure out the missing side length? Let's say that we know that this side length is C, uh, or sorry, this side length is six. C, the hypotenuse, is 12, and we don't know this side length. All right, so first let's double check that we know what we're working with. The side length opposite the 90 degree angle, the right angle, is our hypotenuse, so C is 12. And then the side lengths that form our right angle are the legs. So one could be A, one could be B. Doesn't really matter which. I'm going to say this one is A, this one is B. All right, again, Pythagorean theorem tells us that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Therefore, with this information, a squared plus 6 squared equals 12 squared. A squared plus 36 equals 144. We can solve by A squared by subtracting 36 from both sides. A squared equals 144 minus 36 is 108. And again, we can take the positive square root of both sides. So this tells me that A equals the square root of 108. Now I know that 10 squared is 100 and 11 squared is 121. So 108 is not a perfect square. There's no number that I can multiply by itself to get 108. But there are some other numbers that I can multiply to get 108. So let's look. If I look at 108, I could break this down into 2 times 54. I can break 54 down into 2 times 27. 7 is 3 times 9. And 9 is 3 times 3. So another way to write 108, I'm doing 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. So 108 is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. All right. And let's think about this. These here are perfect squares. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. And then we would still have, be multiplying. All right, so all I'm doing right here is just a little practice for simplifying the number that is under my radical. The radical is what we call um, the square root symbol. So if a is equal to the square root of 108, then that means that a is equal to the square root of 4 times 9 times 3. You know what? We could actually even multiply this again and see what this square is. What's 4 times 9? 36, and that has a perfect square. So 108 is the same thing as 36 times 3. So this is the same thing as the square root of 36 times the square root of 3. The square root of 36, that 36 is a perfect square. So the square root of 36 is 6 times the square root of 3. I can't simplify the square root of 3. There's no number that multiplies by itself to equal 3. No rational number, I should say. So I can remove my multiplication symbol and write 6 square root 3. And we can say this as 6 root 3. So what this tells me, um, this is also correct. Let me put a box around this. This is a correct answer. A is the square root of 108. But as a mathematician, you should always simplify your answer as much as you can. So here's the most simplified version. A is 6 root 3. And that is our side length. 
So we can use Pythagorean theorem to find missing legs or to find a missing hypotenuse. The hypotenuse will always be the letter C. When we add the square of the legs, we will get the square of the hypotenuse. So we can solve for any missing information as long as we have two pieces of information. We can also use the Pythagorean theorem to test if three side lengths will make a right triangle. So remember that the longest side length is always the hypotenuse. So that means in this case that our hypotenuse would be 20 centimeters. So we want to see again if a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And if we substitute this information into the formula and it's true, then these three side lengths do make a right triangle. So let's, these are the two legs, 10 centimeters and 15 centimeters. Doesn't matter which one's a, which one's b, because they're both the legs. When we substitute, we see that 10 squared plus 15 squared would equal 20 squared. 10 squared is 10 times 10, which is 100, plus 15 squared is 15 times 15, which is 225. And then 20 squared is 20 times 20, which is 400. So 100 plus 225 is 325. 325 does not equal 400. So therefore, the answer is no. This does not make a right triangle. All right, let's try one more. Do these side lengths make a right triangle? 7 inches, 24 inches, and 25 inches. Again, the longest side length will be your hypotenuse, so this is C. 7 and 24 will be your legs. It doesn't matter which one's A, which one's B. Pythagorean theorem states that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So therefore, 7 squared plus 24 squared would equal 25 squared. We want to see if this is true. 7 squared is 7 times 7, which is 49. Plus 24 squared is 24 times 24, which is 576. I put it in a calculator. And 25 squared is 25 times 25, which is 625. All right, 576 plus 49 is 625. 625 does equal 625. So yes, this forms a right triangle. Whoops. A right triangle. So as long as you are working with a right triangle, you can use Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse or to find a leg. If you're given three side lengths, you can use Pythagorean theorem to determine if those three side lengths will form a right triangle. Now that you know how to use the Pythagorean theorem, I need you to go complete the quizzes assignment on Pythagorean theorem for my class. After you do that quizzes, I highly recommend that you sit down and work on the last two pages of Mr. Battle's uh, triangle packet. The last two pages are on Pythagorean theorem, so it would really behoove you to sit down and work on Pythagorean theorem right after watching this video. Um, try the quiz is that I assigned you first. If you need more help, just message me on Teams. You can, of course, always join me during office hours from 2 to 3 p.m. every school day. And if you would like to retry the quizzes, you can retry the assignment multiple times. Um, so go ahead, give it a shot. I hope you enjoy this lesson and remember to always Make the rest of your day the best of your day. I love you. Bye.